Hi, everybody. Welcome to LLK number 19. I am Laura Nelkin. I am a knitwear designer based in upstate New York in the Finger Lakes region. And I am sometimes joined by my alter ego, Lola. Um, Lola is pretty fun. Sometimes she says inappropriate things. I try to keep her in her box, but she'll probably be out once or twice during this log. Um, it's been two weeks since I shot a log. Uh, originally, when I started doing these, I was just doing them as the spirit moved me, as I had something to share in my design world or otherwise. And then when the pandemic started, I started doing one every week. And now I think we're all really busy with summer and life, and I really want to keep doing these and enjoying doing them. So I am going to do them as the spirit moves me, but try to keep doing it regularly. I won't stop doing them by any stretch of the imagination. But um, sticking to that schedule meant that I wasn't getting other things done that, um, you know, I have commitments and those things have to happen. So I am going to find a balance. I'm going to do these as as I um, want or as I have things I um, can share with you, but I don't ever want them to feel like a chore for me or not feel intriguing to you guys, right? So it's, it's a two-way street. Um, so that's my take. I get to change my mind again because I'm my own boss and Lola is also my boss. So I have two bosses, which is fine and great. I can totally handle being managed by two people. I'm going to start sounding schizophrenic soon if I keep this up. So um, lots has gone on in the last two weeks. I have a fair amount to talk to you guys about. Just while I was saying I was worried I wouldn't have anything, I actually like there's so much. And when you see me turning off to the side, that is to look at my notes if I get lost. I really try to do these in like one or two takes and not um, do a ton of editing. I um, like it when they're just coming from my heart, from me to you. So with all that, let's just jump right in. Um, I'm wearing my Pacificus. So one of the um, one of the only good things about Blueprint Closing is they sent me back a box of all my samples that they've had forever. And I had asked them for this like more than once during the knit along so I could wear it when I was doing the knit along videos this spring. But I just got it back and I decided it was kind of the perfect thing to wear today. And you'll notice I'm wearing some new earrings that I'll tell you about in a little while. They go with it so perfectly, I had to put it on. I never wear dangly ear earrings and I'm actually really liking it. It makes me feel like the right amount of dressed up. I think it's gonna be an earring summer, you guys. So um, this week, one of the things I did get going finally was the test for that pocket sweater. And there's 25 people testing. I had a few people do the baby and toddler sweaters and those are almost done. The last log that I shot, I was actually knitting a toddler version of the sweater. It has a name. I'm gonna tell you the story in a second, but the name is Tasca, which means posket. Pot <laughs> means pocket in Italian. Um, so this is what I was knitting um, last log and I was trying to get it done for photo shoots. I got adorable photos um, on my friend's toddler. We like did a socially distanced photo shoot, me and my friend and her little girl B. And um, then I did some kind of pictures on a fishing line with my photographer, Jamie. So these guys are almost ready to come out. It could possibly be next week for the baby and toddler patterns. We'll see. I'm super close with them. Um, the tests that I'm doing, there were so many people and normally I've run tests with like I have a Google Doc and then um, we have emails going back to each other in Gmail and it gets crazy very quickly and I can never find information and I never remember if I answered people. And so I tried, decided to try a workflow platform called Slack that I've used like one other time with a few people who were doing a questionnaire and we got it up and running. I got it up and running in like half a day on Saturday and most of us had never used it before and it seems like everybody's getting it. It's making it really easy for me to pin things I need to people to see. It's easy for me to add people to groups and take them out of groups. And um, I love doing new stuff. So Slack is the new, the new thing for me and I think it's how I'll do tests in the future. The testers and I all said that we would um, kind of confab at the end and decide if it was a platform that worked 
for the situation or if it felt like too too much new for everybody. There goes my crochet hook, which I'm not even crocheting anyway. I'm just talking to you. Knitting I can do and talk to you and crochet I really I have to look where I'm putting the hook in. And I've seen crocheters who don't have to look and maybe I'll get there one day and I'll tell you about my crochet project in a few minutes. But I digress. Naming Tosca was really hard. In the beginning, I was naming it Punic, which for stood for pocket tunic, but for very obvious reasons, Lola was not allowed to name it Punic because that is just not appropriate sounding. And then I was naming it Fika, which means pocket in Swedish, because the last time I had a pocket sweater, I named it Polka. And polka means pocket in it in Irish, so it kind of made sense to choose another word that meant pocket. And um, then one of my friends, Andrea from Germany, let me know that ficka sounds a lot like the word for um, fornicating in German. I'm trying to say it nicely and appropriately. Um, and so I decided Fika probably wasn't a good idea. And then some people, some of my testers were kept thinking it was Flicka because I wrote it wrong at one point and called it Flicka instead of Fika, which is a, um, there's a kid's book and movie called Flicka about a really nice horse named Flicka. And so we started looking for a new name and Kelly suggested Tosca, which means pocket in Italian. And I love Tosca. So there's going to be like baby Tosca, toddler Tosca, etc. And look for that next week. I really think we're ready with the baby toddler version super soon. Um, naming is so hard that the Lola's Choice pattern that will, um, it ships July 1st. So it's going to ship, I believe that's next week, towards the end of next week that will ship. That was also really hard to name, and there were many people involved in the naming and choosing, and things got a tiny bit inappropriate and really funny with that one. I can't tell you more, but I once that one comes out, I'll probably wait to do a log until that one's out so I can tell you the naming story behind that next design. I'm very excited for everybody to get it. The sweet treats got here today, and we're all ready to build those kits, so that's exciting. Um, Next up, just a reminder, the knit along in my Ravelry group, the stay home and knit with Laura and Lola is going to end at the end of this month. That's been a really fun knit along because it's the first time I did a knit along where you could like post projects, any projects you're working on, not just projects um, that are my designs. And it's been very fun to see what everybody's doing. There's some really fun mystery knit alongs happening right now that are stunning. And um, I've enjoyed seeing everything you all are working on. Um, that, Cal, there's a prize if you post a photo of anything you're working on within the week and you win a pattern from my Ravelry store. And then the grand prize, and I'll choose the winner on July 1st, is going to be this really beautiful knitting print from my friends at Planet Love Designs. And I'm just gonna put that up right here while I tell you about it. I've not known Tanya and Joe since like the mid 90s when I used to um, go to a lot more music festivals. And then they have always vended at Grassroots Music Festival, which is a festival in Trumansburg that happens every year, but this year. And I know that they have lost a lot of um, their vending experiences this year with all of the arts and crafts shows um, not going on and music festivals. And I just feel so horribly for all of the makers and crafters who earn their living on that circuit because those highly populated events are really not happening. So if they're not up and running with strong web presences, they're gonna really feel it this year. Um, but anyway, Tanya is an amazing printer. She has a gorgeous book out about craftivism and peace. And she did this print called Create that has these hands knitting on it. And um, I just, I kind of want one. So I decided that that's going to be the prize. I'm going to get one for one of you. Um, just because I know it's something you don't already have probably. You know, if I could choose another knitting bag and or some more yarn, but I feel like we've all got a lot of yarn and a lot of knitting bags right now. And I'm just looking for other related pieces that can be prizes that support people that I know that I want to see um, survive the next 9, 10, 12 months, whatever this is we're doing right now. We, we don't know, right? 
Oh, I wanted to tell you that I'm inside today because it's beautiful out and the heat finally broke, but it's really, really, really hot. Um, no, it's beautiful out and the heat broke and it's so windy that the microphone would not want to um, be able to do that. Sorry, I've got a, there something closed on my, on my thing. So I just wasn't going to sound good if I did that. Um, let me close up. These little things keep plopping up. Somebody is very excited. I'll tell you guys about that in a second. I'm getting all these messages while I'm filming this. Um, so not today, but another day I'll be back outside again. Um, that's the Stay Home and Knit with Lola Cal. The next knit along coming up in my Ravelry group is going to be a kit along, which means basically any of my kits that you're knitting on or going to knit, you can enter in that knit along. We'll have weekly prizes, probably yarn. I'll go stash diving for you guys. And then we'll have a um, final prize. I think we'll end it mid-August, that Cal. I haven't quite decided on an end date yet. Um, we've done one of those the last bunch of summers typically because I'm traveling in the summer and it's an easy knit along for me to run while I'm traveling but I know there's so many of you that have kits that you've gotten over the last year that um it would be good to motivate you to get those finished so maybe you want more you never know and then you know there's more coming for N Club and Lola's Choice so that's a it's a good it's a good fun summer knit along because it's small projects that you can get done um to celebrate that I am releasing some new kits so you can see on my ears, I am wearing the Echo earrings. I um, This is a pattern that I did years ago for um, pattern works. Here, I'm gonna come in there so you can see it. And I have to get it to stop moving so that it'll focus. We'll see if it can or not. I'm not sure I can focus or not on that. If I come back a little bit, maybe. Um, so years ago, I did a very, very, very similar pattern for a Pattern Works Kit Club. I think it was 2013, and I've always wanted to redo them again. So what I did was use the same colors as my Fillum bracelet. So those of you who've gotten Fillum bracelets and want matching earrings, that's a possibility for you. Um, I've got some great color, um, great photos that I took with Jamie that I'm very excited about. Um, so those are all the colors and then I'm wearing sand on my ears right here. I love these sparkly lined pink beads. Um, they're really delicate and kind of antique looking. So those kits come in a little tin. I'll flash up a photo right here and they have a dental floss threader. There's videos for how to work things. They have the earring findings in there and a pattern download code. And you'll be able to work on them in that kit along if you want, or um, you will find it almost takes longer to string the beads for those um, earrings than it does to knit them. They're like the fastest thing. So really good for gifting. If you have any gifting to do, I would highly suggest them as a gift. Um, that is the Echo Earring. All the links will be below if you want to check those out more. Um, bless your heart shawl is almost done. The photographs are done. The pattern is done. I am just waiting on, um, the tags to come from the printer and then I will be able to package those up. And, um, I think I need to order more yarn for those soon because the yarn comes from the UK and I heard that they're upping their postal prices significantly starting at the beginning of July. So I'm going to get some more yarn for that and then I'll just have it stashed for when people want kits. I think it's a good idea to get ahead of that. Otherwise, um, there's gonna be some repercussions. I've been doing some online ordering. I also have yarn coming for caramelized cowl kits because that comes from the UK and I knew those prices were rising. So I was like, I better get it while I can. And Linda was from Kettle was really psyched and she's sending me some yarn to play with for an idea I'm having. So that's gonna be a doubly exciting package to get. Um, for fun this weekend because I am crazy. Last week when I was at knitting group, it was super sunny and we were all talking about wanting like a sun hat to wear, like a kind of like cowboy hat that we needed a big brim. And we were talking about if we could crochet them or not. And then I came home and it's like, you know how your phone like listens to you and then tells you things. Somehow all of a sudden on Instagram, I saw this hat by the make and do crew. And it's like exactly what we were talking about, a little kind of like cowboy style sun hat um, to wear at the lake. So I'm crocheting one. 
I have yarn on the way from me that is the yarn they used in the pattern that is, I'm just looking at my notes so I get it right. They suggest Lion Brand Rewind, which is a polyester tape, which I think makes like a really, really nice structured stitch. But I couldn't wait and I found um, Barocco Estiva at my local yarn store. It's like a gradient yarn um, and it's a cotton tape that's a very similar weight to the Rewind. I had to go down like one millimeter to a 4.5 mil uh, millimeter hook to get gauge. Um, and you can see I'm just, just, just starting on the brim. So if I put it on now, it's like the stupidest thing looking thing. Um, I think it's gonna more like sit up like that and then the brim is gonna come out from there. <laughs> this is like, very embarrassing looking and this is going to be the photo for the log if I can figure out how to take it so you can see um, where it's going to come out and I promise to show you guys photos when it's done do you triple dog dare me to wear this while I keep talking to you I am not going to um I only crochet once in a while crocheting actually hurts my hands it hurts my wrists I can like hear my wrists clicking when I crochet. So if any of you have experience with that, like um, wrist discomfort when you're crocheting and if there's ways I could be holding my hands differently, I'm totally open, but I can literally hear them clicking. I think I'm too big with my crochet motions. Um, so I don't do too much of it a day, I basically get. Right now that I'm on the brim, I'm getting to do just a few rounds a day, which means it'll be done soon. And um, I'm psyched to have a handmade summer hat. I'm all about making myself what I need. Um, Ravelry had a big change last week and um, I had asked people what they thought about it on my Facebook page when it first came out, just kind of like letting people know that it was out there. And um, in the ensuing weeks, it turns out that some people with um, neurodiversity issues, which I did not know a lot about, are feeling some sensitivities with the site. So there is an option to toggle back to the old Ravelry. Um, I was thinking about doing kind of like a um, screenshot showing you how to navigate around the new Ravelry, but I think some things might change. So I want to wait to do that until like the new site is finally set. But if you want to change back to the old look and you're not enjoying the new look, or you kind of want to compare the two, the old look has not changed at all. They've not made, made any changes to that. All you do is click on your profile picture, like your photo or whatever you have for your profile. If you mouse over that, there'll be a drop down menu and then just scroll down and towards the bottom, it'll say change to the old Ravelry and you'll see the old Ravelry icon. Just click on that and it will reset you. You might have to re-log back in if you're switching back and forth. Sometimes I do have to do that and sometimes I don't, but that's how you get back to the old one if you miss it and you would prefer to go back to that for now. Um, let me know if you have any other questions about that. I'm happy to support you um, with what little I know. Um, I did beta test it, so I was in on the testing. And one of the things that was hard for my eyes, they actually changed. So in the very beginning, they had one te um, test on the new site, and then they like switched it to the default text, which I find easier to read. But I'm a little older, and my eyesight's not great. And you guys, I found a highlight in my eyebrow this week. So by highlight, I mean a gray hair. So I'm not... That's, that's like a big thing, I feel like. I plucked it right out of there and then I found another one three days later. So maybe I need to start, stop plucking them and accept them. I don't know, good times. I like growing up. Um, the blueprint bullshit. That's the next thing on my list. That was Lola, she curses more than I do. Um, they still don't have a solution for downloading I am legally contracted and cannot tell you guys how to download stuff, but there are resources out there if you Google for it. I just can't um, support you in that. Unfortunately, if you wanna do a back channel for downloading your classes, I really believe, I still believe them that they are working on a solution and there is going to be an answer, whether it's that you're getting shipped your classes on DVD or you they're giving you a download option and a certain amount of time to get stuff downloaded. If I were you, I would go buy a hard drive or some kind of external drive that you can back up to. I would do that anyway if you don't have one to put stuff that you care about on. You should always have a backup of things. Um, 
But if I was going to uh, learn a lesson from this for all of us, um, with Blueprint, it's not as easy. Like with Amazon, with books, it's not as easy. But whenever I buy something, like when I buy a sewing pattern or I buy a pattern on Ravelry or I buy music on Amazon or wherever else I'm buying music or from the artist, I always download it and put a copy on my computer and make a backup of it. So I think it's really important to take responsibility from the get-go when you're purchasing something to download it and save it for yourself and not count on some other company or whoever to be storing the thing that you've bought for you. And if you do that when you buy something, then it means it's less work if you decide if you find out later you have to go back and get all of that stuff. That said, with Blueprint, that was never an option because they never gave you a download it and own it forever option. Um, and that's tr also true with like my Kindle books. I can't down, I don't have a copy of those anywhere. There's probably a way to do it that I should look into at some point. But that's, it's a lesson for all of us, I think. Um, so if I was gonna get on a high horse with all, with, you know, everyone and digital property that you're purchasing, that's what I suggest. And that's what I do first off. Even with Ravelry, when I buy a pattern, I make sure I download a copy. But the thing to do with that is to remember there might be an update to a pattern if there's a RADA. So you still want to go back on Ravelry and look and update. Don't work off the patterns you're saving, but see if there's an, an update on that, all right? That's just a little tips or tricks for you. Newsflash. Max was just coming through the house and he wanted me to know that you can download Kindle books if you install Kindle for PC on your desktop. I, there's probably something similar if you're on an Apple device and then you can download your books as well. So um, that's something that he's trained me about um, over the years and I just didn't know about the Kindle thing. So I've got a fair amount of book downloading in my future. I just need a rainy day to do that. It's way too nice out lately for being on the computer any more than necessary, in my opinion. I totally forgot to tell you guys one thing. Um, the grocery girls last week, Tracy and Jody, who are two awesome sisters from Canada, um, they have a YouTube channel and they're hysterical and they're great knitters and really good people. I had sent them some kits because they've never knit with beads before and um, they talked about them last week and Tracy is currently trying out her first beaded project and I think I got her hooked. So I know that they are um, talking about those a bit. And they also cover a lot of different designers and yarns that I've never heard about before. So they're really fun for me to watch because I end up being exposed um, to new, did I already say yarns and designers and books? They're um, just really simpatico and they're two awesome ladies. So if you don't follow them, I'll give you their link below as well. You should check them out. All right, I'm psyched to tell you some other stuff. In not knitting news, I'm going to tell you about what we've been eating lately. Um, last weekend, I made hamburger buns from a King Arthur recipe. And with all the Etsy orders, I'm still shipping out yeast with everybody's order. Um, there's enough yeast in that package to make the hamburger buns. I believe that recipe is already linked on the blog post on the card that you get when you order from Etsy. Um, but I'll also put it below for you guys because they were super yummy and we had veggie burgers with them the night I made them just super quickly. But then we ate them for egg sandwiches for breakfast for like three or four mornings and they um, they lasted really well. They, they just had a nice shelf life. And the only thing I did different to the recipe is I really love rosemary. So when I um, melted the butter for brushing on the top, I just chopped up rosemary and put it in the butter and let it like warm a little bit in there in the warm butter. Um, and that just really added this element that was scrumptious. Um, I almost put on Trader Joe's everything but the bagel, but I decided not to, although that stuff is good on everything. So next time I might try that because I like a seeded hamburger bun as well. Um, our CSA started pickups last year for uh, last year last week. For those of you who don't know what a CSA is, that's community supported agriculture. And um, we belong to a farm that's like literally that way across our yard and like a few miles. Like we could walk there if there weren't like a few creeks. And I don't even think there's any houses to tell you the truth. 
between um, me and where the farm is. One day I should try and walk that for fun. Um, it would be it would be a hike. I think I'd need a compass or my or my um, compass on my phone or something. Um, but we go there once a week and pick up a farm share and we get a ton of food from them. And this time of year is always so yummy because we've not had a lot of fresh food. And um, one of the things they grow are these hackeri or hakuri. I've heard them um, pronounced both ways. Turnips, they're like these little white turnips that are closer to like a apple radish than a turnip. And we eat them raw. I just um, take slices of them and peel them. And then I like put cheese on them or I put them in hummus. And if you ever see those at, at a store or farmer's market, and they'll look like a vegetable you might not have seen before. Some of you might know them, but um, I only found out about them when I joined the CSA. And they are my favorite thing. And I have like tons in my fridge and I've been eating them every day. And they are scrumptious, especially when they're cold and it's really hot out. Um, so look for those and tell me what you think if you like them. The other thing they have are a ton of radishes and their radishes just get bigger and better than the radishes I grow in my raised beds. So I got a ton of radishes and my favorite thing to do with them besides clean them and eat them with butter and salt, which is so freaking good, is um, to saute them in like brown butter on the stove on a hot, hot pan. And... Um, I mentioned that to my friend Jill the other day and she was like, hot radishes? And it's totally a thing. I make them very simple, just like hot butter on a pan on the stove. There's a recipe in the New York Times that has you like braise them in the oven at a high heat and then finish them off with a little butter. I've seen a few other recipes that are more finicky than what I do. They're so good. I could just, I eat them as a side. We have them as a side the other night with um, chicken on the grill and some greens. And it was very good. And we had fresh kale salad, like massage kale salad with kale from the farm. And I am happy when the farm is back in season because it's, it's a lot of work going to do the pickup and then bringing everything home and cleaning it and prepping it. But it's so worth it to just have a fridge full of fresh food. Um, the other thing that we had this week is Belle and I have been doing weekly Zoom happy hours with my parents because they're in Florida and we're up here and I have no idea when we'll see them again because um, New York just actually said that if people want to come up from Florida, it's a 14 day quarantine to come up here. So that's that ship has sailed. They're not coming up here this summer and at some point I'll figure out how to get down there. But in the meantime, we have weekly happy hours and Belle and I are starting to get a little creative with our drinks for the happy hours. So this week we had um, fresh local strawberries and mint that I muddled in the bottom of a glass and then we poured Prosecco over that and it was very, very, very good. And I would really suggest that. It was not fussy, it wasn't um, hard. We both ended, the, the our Zooms are about an hour and we each try to have like one drink because they're at 5.30 and that's just too early for me to be boozing. And um, Belle and I both like finished ours too quickly and wanted another one. So we made one with seltzer because they were so good. Yummy, try that. Um, book wise, I'm finally reading again. That was a long stretch of not reading so much. And um, I am almost done, very, very close to being done with The Vanishing Half, which I told you guys about last time. That is a novel by Britt Bennett that just came out. It is a fictional book about um, two black twins who are born in the South and they're both very light skin colored and one of them decides to pass as white and not tell her husband that she married, that she grew up black. And the other um, very much maintains her, her um, identity and goes back and lives in the town that she grew up in. And the book ends up being, I, I know when I told you guys about it last week, I wasn't that deep into it. It ends up being more about their daughters and less about them. And it is very well written and I'm really enjoying it. And I would highly suggest it if you are looking for a fictional book that is also really relevant to what we're all talking about right now, which is Black Lives Matter and real equality throughout the world for people of any color skin. So um, I'm really enjoying that book and you might wanna check it out too. 
Um, and then queued up after that, I have two books to check out. One is the Wolf Hall trilogy, which I have never um, read. I know those came out years ago, and I keep they keep coming up when I bring up with people like, what should I read next? Those are by Hilary Mantel. And then the other book is um, the Book Woman of Troublesome Creek, which came up last week. I think somebody mentioned that. I had... Um, read when you see my eyes doing that it's because i'm reading um i had read jojo moy's the giver of stars which is out about roosevelt's kentucky pack horse librarians um in kentucky basically there were women who were librarians who were delivering books to people who lived way up in the mountains on horseback and that is what giver of stars was about and it was superb and i really enjoyed it so this other book that came out right around the same time as giver of stars is also about the same subject so i'm going to give that a try and do like kind of a comparison of the two i'm, I'm interested to see if they end up feeling too similar because it's like the same subject and if i get the characters confused a little bit or if i'm able to keep them separated so that's what I have going for like bedtime reading. My bedtime reading, I keep very light. I need, um, I need to be able to fall asleep while I'm reading. So I can't read anything that's going to make me think too much. That's just me. Everybody's different. That's what I do for bedtime reading. Um, on audiobook, I am still slowly listening to How to Be an Anti-Racist by, I don't want to get his name wrong, by Ibram X. Kendi. Um, and I'm listening to it slowly for two reasons. One, because his voice is very soothing to me and I tend to space out and start thinking like, and then I realize I'm not listening to him. And two, because I want to be concretely understanding his statements and thinking about them and not kind of like glossing over them and speeding through the book. So that's a long listen to me. And in conjunction with that, I've been listening to pod, he's kind of been doing the podcast circuit lately. So Brene Brown has a great podcast with him. I just listened to one with Dax Shepard. I had never listened to the armchair expert with Dax Shepard and his friend, um, Monica Padman. And I'm really enjoying that. So I have that queued up now to listen to. Um, and then I also sometimes listen to when I need to just space out and get stuff done in the studio when I'm building kits. I, um, I love my favorite murder. Do you guys know my favorite murder? Um, it's a murder podcast. Um, and the women who do it are hysterical and it's kind of like, I tend to let those pile up. Like I'll listen to it and binge listen and then I'll forget about it for a few weeks and then they pile up and I'll binge listen again. So um, I've had a little binge going for that. Um, and then watching, I haven't been too all over the place with watching. I watched 13th, which I told you about last time. Um, and that is directed by Ava DuVernay. DuVernay, I think that's pronounced right. Um, and that's on Netflix. Um, and then I watched Just Mercy on Amazon this week, which was superb. And I highly suggest that. It's free right now on Amazon. Um, go watch that if you haven't watched it. I really, um, it opened my eyes up to, um, in a way, like things I knew, but I didn't quite get the magnitude of how many people on death row are of color and falsely accused and unable to clear their names because they don't have good representation. Um, and it's, it's a very well done movie that is quite accurate about the times. Um, I also have Selma queued up. That's also another Ava DuVernay. Um, I know I'm saying her name wrong. I'm really sorry. I, sh I should like listen right before I do these so I don't sound like a freaking asshole. Um, I also, when I was researching Ava, there, I just won't say her last name and then I'll sound better. <laughs> um, a show came up called Queen Sugar that I'm quite intrigued by and I want to watch that as well. I'm linking these all below. And then my friend brought up Spike Lee's Do the Right Thing the other day. And um, I haven't watched that in a long, long time. So that is going to be a rewatch. Um, and then the other thing that I've done as I'm exploring my own anti-racism work, and I'm not trying to like push this on you guys because we're all in different places with it, but um, I've been finding things on YouTube that I'm really enjoying that are not long. They're like 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Sometimes they're a half hour, a little longer, a little shorter. And what I've done is start an anti-racism playlist 
like things that I found on that topic on YouTube. So on my YouTube channel, one of the um, tabs that you can check out is called Playlists. And I've just been, like, I have a face mask playlist that I don't think I ever told you guys about. Um, and I add to that when I find face mask videos that I like. And now I've started an anti-racism playlist. And there's some interesting stuff in there. Not all of it that I love, but I think it's all good watches. One of the things I really loved was... Um, Oprah did a Where Do We Go From Here series with a bunch of different speakers on that. And I've watched the first one. I haven't quite watched the second one yet. But basically, when I have stuff in my queue that I want to watch, I'm putting in there so I can find it again. Um, there is also a sports star. And you guys know that I am not a sports ball player by any stretch of the imagination. And his name is Acho. Oh, Emmanuel Acho. I really don't know if he's a basketball player or a football player or what. I'm going to guess football because he looks pretty buff. Um, I could be so wrong. He could be a hockey player or a baseball player. But he has a show that he just started on YouTube called... Um, I didn't write down the name. Oh, it's called Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man. And basically the first one, he kind of explains what he's going to be doing in his uncomfortable conversations. And then um, that's like the preview for it. And then the first one he does is with Matthew McConaughey. And the second one that he does is with um, Chip and I always forget Chip's wife's name, Gaines, the, um, the couple from Waco that have that home show that I've never watched before. Um, and all their kids, which is really cute. And what I will say about that show is it is really palatable. I don't actually think it's very uncomfortable at all. I think it's a tiny bit whitewashed and um, not challenging. It didn't make me feel uncomfortable. I wasn't cringeworthy. I felt pretty good about myself afterwards. And I'm not sure that's the work for me right now. Um, I have listened to more women who are knitters on Instagram of color who have really strong messages and um, are challenging in ways that make me feel like, oh, I don't want to listen to her anymore. She's not making me feel so good. And it is not about me. And um, so some of those some of those women I'm really enjoying right now are Gigi Makes It. Um, Marissa Maid has been really killing it with some content that I find um, to be strong and powerful and, and her voice is really unique, but um, I'll link some people below um, to just kind of round that out a little bit. Um, I didn't think I was going to go off so long about that. Um, I promise to tell you about the blueprint crap once we know more. I will keep you in the loop about everything going on. I am super excited for this little pocket tunic. Sorry, it's got a name, Tasca. I gotta like, I gotta get the name rolling because I've been calling it Punic for the last three months, and it's just not appropriate. So, um, Tasca, almost ready. Earrings in the Etsy shop, and come knit with us in the Ravelry group. We're lots of fun, and we love having you there. Okay. Oh, and don't forget to su subscribe. I always forget to tell you that. Just click on the button before, and if you click the little bell, then you get email alerts when another one of these things comes out. And I appreciate you, and this is the world's longest ending ever. Thank you.